today the 16th of October, just gone eight o'clock here uh, in London. We'll have a, a quick look over the charts, how we're trading, some stories from overnight uh, and how we look going into uh, the rest of the day and the session. Uh, yesterday, a pretty, pretty interesting day uh, across the board, has to be said, equities pushing higher uh, as we had the first real earnings uh, of the, the quarter come through JP Morgan Chase uh, improving uh, and beating their estimates uh, while Johnson Johnson raising their sales and earnings forecast for the year. These all helping uh, push stocks higher uh, and getting back to the 3,000. So get your S&P 3,000 hats at the ready because we've just uh, reached there last night. Um, however, we have just drifted a touch from those highs uh, just under flat for uh, the session so far. There's been some trade comments overnight which we'll go through um, and uh, we'll also have a look uh, at the Brexit situation as well. As you can see, the pound still up relatively close to yesterday's highs. We hit 128 on the futures yesterday. The euro benefiting from some positive um, Brexit uh, talks as well or the, the ongoing uh, talks that have been happening overnight uh, as the optimism of a deal coming together closer uh, looms uh, as well. Uh, so we'll have a, a look into to those in due course. As you can see, the, the picture on my right, you know, no surprises where these negotiations are, are taking place. The only uh, room in the building uh, with the lights on uh, as overnight Rex negotiations working into the night uh, to try and get a deal through. The rumours today going through that uh, around one o'clock this deal will be uh, put forward. Of course, tomorrow we do have the, the EU27 uh, meeting, so time supposedly running out if Boris is going to get this deal done uh, from October the 31st. Um, the aim would be to present the draft to national delegations on Wednesday morning, uh, the rumour saying that EU diplomats are saying. So what exactly is this, this deal that's looking to, to get through? Because again, it was a situation overnight where you're having comments backing it, supporting it, denying it, um, and it's always a tricky one. I think over the last, uh, you could, could say a lot longer, but certainly over the last three, four weeks, it's been a very tricky one to trade the pound in that there's been these comments that have come out and you just don't know whether to believe them due to the fact that if, over those last weeks that any, any push higher has just been met with a, a denial. However, over the last, well, we can call this since the 10th, so last week, uh, on Thursday, there was no real denial uh, of any headlines that were coming through as such, and if they were, they weren't met at all with any move lower. So from 122.50, we're now trading up just below 128, so a really big push higher. The optimism is certainly there. The no deal looks like it's completely off the table for now. Uh, but what is this deal? So here, a good article from uh, The Mirror just explaining uh, the the new Brexit plan which was sent uh, to uh, the EU uh, to replace Theresa May's 585-page withdrawal agreement. Uh, it would keep a transition period con uh, continuing EU rules and payments to December 2020, but it would scrap the Irish backstop insurance policy designed at preventing a harder border between Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland from 2021. Uh, in the backstop uh, place would be two borders, so this is potentially where this issue is going to be. Northern Ireland and Britain would share a customs territory, uh, and Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland would share EU single market rules. Custom checks across the Irish border would only take place on a very small number of goods away from the border itself to avoid new physical infrastructure. Um, so this is going to, well, supposedly be put forward. Brussels sources indicated that the draft treaty could be published in London as early as this morning. So I'll put the, keep the scorecard just in the background. And it's certainly going to be a morning and afternoon of comments coming through. It's going to be an incredibly volatile day, I would say, for, for the pound. Uh, so just be careful. Don't feel just because there's volatility, it's, it's one that's needed uh, to, to be traded. However, some of the, uh, the, the comments uh, from people on, on either side, uh, Tory Brexiteer Steve Baker said he believed a tolerable deal he could vote for was in sight. His hard Brexiteer ERG group of Tory MPs, however, will not 
pass final judgment until they have seen the legal text of any deal. So comments regarding this, who's going to back it, who's not. These rumours will start to appear from now, I would imagine. Uh, and with the pound, just, you know, it, it's, it's relatively unmoved, you would say, c compared to previous days. However, literally right on the, uh, the sort of the open, uh, we have just come back down to test those lows. You can see here a bit of a, a push lower through 128 this morning. The pivot holding up things and around 125.50, along with some support from yesterday, would certainly be an area I'd be keeping an eye on. And you can see that zone really uh, coming down to 127.22 uh, uh, as well. Mr. Johnson, Boris Johnson himself, reckons he will have a, a few votes from, from Labour as well, hoping as many 30 Labour MPs, but the Mirror uh, saying that they only reckon that would be fewer than 10. Uh, so obviously we'd still need some uh, backing elsewhere for this deal to actually pass through. And this has really been the issue, of course, as we know, for a long time. Any deal Theresa May got was just shot down immediately. Uh, it has to be said, it does feel a lot more positive on the, the Boris Johnson side of things and uh, the, the idea that we could get some sort of deal by October the 31st is certainly, uh, you can see, reflected in the market. However, of course, any further delay, any rejection of a deal, um, basically no uh, ground made, the pound has, has got to come back down. And uh, if we have a look from where we were trading, yes, you've got the idea of the, the no deal uh, in the mix there. Uh, but certainly the way Boris Johnson has been going, that if they were not to get any sort of deal passed through, whether that be Parliament or with the EU, uh, some of this has to unwind, especially if he comes out talking, saying we're going to leave on the 31st no matter what. Well, why can't we come back down to 123, 122 area uh, off a very bad day uh, today and, and then that follow through for the, for the week ahead. Looking technically as well, you can see over the last few sessions we've been trending nicely higher. You've got the low of the 11th, the low of the 14th and 15th. Technically looks you know really, really good here. So let me just remove that circle there. And you can see where does that come in today? Right on that level we were talking around uh, from yesterday morning's high. So a really key trend line to, to have on the, the charts there. One that I'd be, be focusing on. Uh, if we were to get below there, chances are there's been some negative headlines that have come through and we're going to drift down. Uh, if we um, just have a look at the previous days compared to, so if we look at yesterday, day before and so on, going back to the 10th and then the size difference in the, well, going back here to the 26th, very volatile days. We're doing you know multiple points a day uh, across the board here for, for pound related assets. So just... Uh, be careful is what I would uh, would be saying here. Um, also, comments from from uh, Barnier yesterday. He told EU, EU ambassadors yesterday that the PM's Brexit proposals were not yet good enough. So, as mentioned, you got comments either side uh, that are just going to spike price action to the upside, to the downside uh, as well. So, just be careful. Elsewhere, overnight uh, stocks continued in Asia to to push on uh, to the upside following Wall Street. Uh, move to the upside. That really coming yesterday in S&P and, and the Dow and the Nasdaq just after the cash open. So earnings were coming out, filtering through. We pushed higher and uh, that was replicated in to uh, Asian equities as well. Just bringing in the Nikkei here. Sorry, that took a, a while to, to bring that up. You can see here, once it loads, the Nikkei making a new high for the year yesterday. We briefly just come back underneath it. You can see here pushing on from the last few days and of course looking quite similar in price action to, to recent days too. US equities uh, also helped by the fact of a, a positive trade war development over last week uh, but also the earnings coming through and, and equity pushing higher uh, and in Asia's case making some new highs for the year. However, I would just be a touch careful today of expecting equities to continue to push on uh, and just before my reason is why, I'd just be very careful here of, of looking at these lows of the, the day for certain, certainly the S&P, uh, the Dow Jones is testing it and the Nasdaq as well uh, on that pivot uh, in this case. So just be slightly careful about getting uh, at too far ahead of ourselves. While yes, the earnings were, were good yesterday and uh, we do have some more out today, uh, we also had the fifth straight downgrade from uh, the IMF to, to global growth. 
Uh, so the world economy, according to the IMF, will grow at 3% this year, down from 3.2% seen in July, uh, with the 2020 estimate lowered to 3.4% from 3.5, so a couple of downgrades there. The fund said uh, yesterday uh, in its latest World Economic Outlook, uh, and the forecast for this year would be the weakest since 2009, when the world economy shrank as the fund chopped projections from the US, Europe to China and India uh, as well. What that looks like in a chart, just bring this into picture here, you can see slowest growth since 2009, if we go back to when they first started uh, lowering and cutting projections, it was kind of around this time last year, and it was just adding fuel to the fire after the midterms and everything else that was going on uh, in stocks that led to a further push to the downside. So I'd just be slightly wary of this filtering through. We also had some comments uh, overnight from the trade talks and how, the, how China were urging the, the US to stop interfering and threatening to retaliate with strong measures uh, after the US House passed a bill aimed at supporting Hong Kong protests. So these comments coming through are, are certainly not positive uh, and it does feel, just looking at stocks, that we could be, you know, after making a four-week high, it might just be time for a bit of a breather. Your lines in the sand are, for now anyway, I'd say just having a look at the Nasdaq here, the high that we had from last week so just bringing that picture in to here 79 to the bottom side 18 if we stay above that and the pivot then fine i don't see why we can't push on but certainly below there i would expect a, a further move to come down so one just to to bear in mind that and, and keep an eye on speaking of those earnings uh, it helped us push higher in stocks as as i mentioned jp morgan uh, and johnson johnson both uh, led uh, well, both had uh, better than expected uh, estimates, results from third quarter, and, and as I said, Johnson Johnson raising sales and earnings forecast for the year. A really good um, Twitter account to follow if you don't already uh, is at Earnings Whispers. So they put this out every uh, week when there's obviously key earnings. So you'll you'll get one of these uh, from Sunday as well, and just goes and shows the the main and most anticipated earnings for the session ahead before the open, before the U.S. Open, and after the U.S. close. So today you can see some some pretty big ones, and those Nasdaq traders keep an eye after closing. And Netflix coming out usually around UK time, 9 p.m. 9:30. You can expect to to see that. Also got uh, IBM coming out as well, uh, and Bank of America before the open. So a couple of the, the banks, as mentioned by Anthony yesterday, are all going to be reporting this week. Uh, so certainly one to bear in mind. However, I had, and I said this uh, to to the guys last week, it was, it seems to be the first earnings season in a while where it, it's not expected to be the worst since X, Y, and Z. So um, yeah, stops higher for now, but how long uh, can it really uh, last will be uh, the interesting thing to, to keep an eye on there. Having a look elsewhere, um, just at the calendar as well. So while Brexit is going to dominate the morning and afternoon from a, a UK perspective, it is just worth keeping an eye on the 9.30 inflation numbers. Uh, there was comments as well from uh, Bank of England um, members of the MPC saying uh, if Brexit's delayed they're going to have to lower rates and if there is it and on the flip side if there's a deal done it would only be a steady increase of rates anyway. Uh, the inflation numbers you might get some small volatility that comes through but uh, I would, uh, wouldn't be too sure of, of seeing an overall reaction. Just seeing some, some comments come through for the pound it's already going to start and the pound just drifting lower, just bring in the pound here. You can see coming down to test that level we, we had marked up. Uh, the comments come through UK official, government downbeat on chances of Brexit deal, uh, Bloomberg sources, UK official, DUP holding up progress, deal chances are low. If this is the case, we have to come lower. Keep an eye on that trend line, keep an eye, an eye uh, on the higher the 11th and yesterday below there. Uh, you've got to imagine as well, you're getting that psychological shift of that, the sellers being in control. So obviously keep an eye and ear out for, for comments, following the right people on Twitter, having the scorecon. I can't stress on a day like today how important that would uh, would be. Back to the calendar, as mentioned, 9.30, you've got the UK inflation numbers, you've got the EU inflation numbers, final reading 
uh, from September uh, at 10 o'clock for that year-on-year -year figure, but also worth keeping an eye uh, on that as well. As we go into the afternoon at 1.30, we've also got the uh, um, Canadian uh, inflation numbers, so UK, EU and Canadian inflation numbers, and also the US retail sales uh, which are expected for month on month at 0.3 as usual a pretty big range for the low to the high 0.1 to 0.7 there as well due to the bank holiday we've also got the api out in the evening 9 30 that is expected uh, that comes after the u.s business in at three o'clock also got quite a few speakers to keep an eye on ecb's lane uh, at three so you can see the afternoon as if we didn't have enough comments coming out of brexit we've also got uh, EU speakers, we've got Bank of England speakers, Carney, Haldane also coming through and then a couple of Feds into the back end of the session but we've also got Carney speaking at 11 o'clock uh, over in the States uh, so maybe one just as we go into the back end of the day to keep an eye on there uh, as well. So overall just having a, a quick look at the markets, how we stand opportunity wise we've gone through the, the S&P and I would, would would say that is the, the the sort of the line in the sand certainly to the downside that i'll be keeping an eye on yes you do have the the highs from yesterday that could be a target should we get that breakthrough so around 29.82 i'd be looking to the downside if we were to have positive earnings if we were to have positive trade talks and all of this come through i'd be looking maybe to get long on a break of a trend line so rather than trying to buy low or sell high on a day like today for stocks i'll just be letting the market tell me what's going on um, and go with the flow so selling below here where maybe the sellers come in or a break of the trend line and, and previous highs to get us to, to 3000 uh, again the the move yesterday in uh, s p in the afternoon saw uh, safe havens come under pressure bonds yen and gold as we have here you can see all coming lower uh, and you know, my favourite level, you're probably bored of me talking about it, 1492 acted as great support in the morning. We then got below there, acted as an opportunity to get short. Uh, you can just see here on the five minute chart, it's incredible just how good this level has been opportunity wise. If you just traded off that when it broke and retested, you'd be a very, very uh, wealthy person but uh, yeah break of that came back to retest and, and since then we are below however if stocks obviously do come under pressure keep an eye on that high of the day and the pivot which has been tested multiple times as well and maybe even looking to get a retest of that to the downside last few lows of the days you can see starting to uh, come together here be keeping a, a watch on that break of that be looking down to possibly the low of the month not saying it's definitely going to happen today but these are the areas that I'd be looking at. This potential trend line to the downside, uh, if that was to, to break and close below here, I'd be looking therefore at the low of the 11 and also those lows for the month. Above the pivot, be looking down up towards 1492 as just the, the key area as it has been, uh, just to reiterate how many times it's just offered a good opportunity just over what we can see on the chart. And this isn't even going back to previous months. Just fantastic for, for for gold there as well oil relatively flat yesterday it has to be said even though some decent opportunities s1 offering a good place to to have got long also the the, the break of the morning lows you can see here around 10 o'clock uh, led to a good push pivot uh, along with the highs from yesterday previous lows from the 11th really good range bound trade fold false break to push higher but we finished relatively flat uh, as well however we have this popped to a new low no comments uh, as of anything coming through seems more technical i would say on that um, as well uh, but obviously worth having a watch european stocks will probably be the driver uh, you have to say for the the us uh, and at the moment those pivot levels over in the us are not in danger as the dax is still buoyed uh, from this morning sort of open relatively uh, nicely I would say above that pivot which also you can see just below is yesterday morning's high so that would be the area I'd be looking at a break of that then I would expect US stocks to uh, push down uh, as well just this morning the Bund uh, has been pushing higher uh, as we have come to test and look at that beautiful level here traded from the, the low of the 11th acting as resistance speaking of the low of the 11th you've also got that in the play right now 
for T notes uh, as well, which have just technically reversed a touch. So, uh, slight bit of risk off this morning. Uh, however, a bit of profit taking now as equities uh, just seem to find a floor. The pound is getting a, a bit more volatile. You've got Laura Koonsberg tweeting uh, a lot, which is always something to keep an eye on. You can see just testing my trend line there. Uh, as well so I've been looking to see can we get a close below that if that's the case I do believe we will push down quite uh, quickly um, but for now just those comments that are really driving price government officials downbeat on chances of Brexit deal and the DUP holding up uh, progress uh, as well any questions as usual please uh, do let me know obviously be on the chat throughout the day uh, but I hope you'll have a, a good trading session uh, and I'll catch you all in the chat.